Cloak and Dagger, Season two, season 1, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called Suicide Sprints. And, yes, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MC leading up to and including this episode, but not for the thing that came out after this episode first premiered. This episode is also somehow written TVPG, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we open on the... You know, we see that... Tandy has crashed her car, and then only at the very end of the episode do we see the the actual crash. I don't think it was the most effective, like what, what do y'all call those Te teaser kind of thing? You know, the what you know when a when a TV show episode will open with something that you know gets you interested like honestly i kind of forgot that it that that was even how the episode started until we got to the end of the episode but you know they're they're difficult sometimes it can be very difficult to come up with something that works well um let's see so yeah tyrone is talking to you know at, at first it sounds like he's talking to a psychiatrist because you know the guy's like talking about you know take the pills I gave you, and it turns out you know he's the the he's he's a priest, Father Delgado, and Delgado what whatever some something like that I'm yeah not trying to be disrespectful, and I did think that you know some of what he said was legitimately good advice which shocked me coming from a, a priest but i did really love when you know tyrone turns it around and says who's to say god wasn't the one who put this anger in me because you know read old testament a lot of smoting a lot of anger and let's see the um, uh yeah with with tyrone we see this thing of you know Personally, I probably connected most to like Peter Parker, Spider-Man, but it is a thing where a teenager will get powers and then suddenly not be able to fulfill the obligations they have to anything other than superhero stuff. So, you know, he misses. You know, he he shows up late to practice, even though he meant to be there early. And the the coach, you know, is is making all the others, I, I didn't even know they were called this, but apparently those are the titular suicide sprints. And I keep having to restrain myself from making a reference to 2016 Suicide Squad. But the, yeah, um, you know, as we see later in the episode, and I think some, like, authority figures who care, you know, who do this, know that this is how, you know, what ends up happening. It, I, I find it baffling to, I find it very hard to believe that they can't put two and two together like this. Collective punishment does not lead to the individual that you're, that isn't the only one you're punishing doing better. It leads to everyone else that you're collectively punishing retaliating against them. This is... Yeah, so I really appreciate the honesty of the, the show in showing that. <sighs> Texting in church was very, like, this is, this literally is what, like, th there's, there's a bunch of, of middle-aged people who, when they close their eyes, all they can imagine are Gen Z texting instead of just talking to each other in their defense. They're in church, you know, which... Perhaps not the best place to, to, you know, but I don't know. I thought it was kind of cute that they're literally sitting right next to each other. You know, she specifically intentionally went and sat next to him so that they could text, you know, just, yeah. And, and like, everyone's got their phone out, which, yeah, you know, if these sermons were doing more for young people, they wouldn't be, you know, having their phones out. They'd be paying more close attention. Um, let's see, and I, yeah, I like the thing of you know, she she says you're a, you're a saint, you should be on the stained glass, and you know, meanwhile he's relating to Tandy because he also has you know, yeah, he also has anger inside. 
And I agree, you know, once again, you know, Father Delgado is right. It's like poison in your veins. And let's see. And, and yeah, you know, this idea of, you know, maybe if I, you know, get revenge on the person who hurt, you know, who hurt me and my family, you know, maybe that'll make it better. That is a, a very, you know, it can, the, the, the symmetry of it can be appealing. This, this idea of, you know, if you, you know, he's, he's evening things out kind of thing, you know, he's, he's preventing, you know, what was his name again? Connors from victimizing anyone else kind of thing, you know. Right, I really appreciate that there are consequences to Tandy, you know, stabbing. You know, like, like I said in, in my video on the first episode, I don't think that she was in the wrong. He left, you know, uh, what was his name? Rick, I think. I'm just going to try to make sure. Yeah, Rick left her no choice. But, yeah, you know, the this thing of, you know, if he survived, he can ID her. If he doesn't, she killed someone, you know. And the, the, let's see. Right, and yeah, so the episode brings up this thing of, you know, Tandy always runs when, when things go wrong. Um, yeah, her mom really screwed her by spending that money. The the I, I do appreciate that in the big argument, her mom does get to make good points. You know, there's a lot of media similar to this where it would be like, no, 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 the, the teenager is, is completely right and the parent is completely wrong. And sometimes that is the case. But this isn't quite that, you know. Yeah, you know, her mom points out, where did that money come from? You know, I did not steal money from you that you earned I stole money from you that you stole you know to once again I'm I have a lot of empathy for for Tandy she doesn't have a lot of opportunities you know but at the end of the day those you know that money was stolen it was stolen from rich people who exploit but technically still illegal let's see you know, Robin Hood does not work out quite as well in modern day big city America. Um, let's see, that brings us to right, and and <laughs> yeah, you look like you're working your pants off. I see you're celebrating. Yeah, that those were some some choice words. And let's see, I think think that might be and I do appreciate you know the the mother like what did she say it's the money was spent on the injunction you know like it feels like it's it's this kind of Sisyphean thing you know it's not it's never gonna work out but at least she's not just like you know I don't know buying lottery tickets or something that's never gonna you know it's it's almost impossible to win the lottery, you know, you, the, the odds are so stacked against you. She's trying to be productive. She's trying to, to improve things in a way that, you know, yeah, probably not going to work, but at least it's, you know, she's not giving up kind of thing. And let's see. Right, I thought it worked well with the, the cop. Uh, Detective Bridget O'Reilly appears to be, you know, she she pops up every so often throughout the episode, and then at the end she arrests Liam. And let's see, yeah, and at one point, like this cop, as if I understand correctly, he put like he wrote his phone number on the coffee before handing it to her, which. Based on her expression, uh, you know, and, and her conventionally attractive good looks, she probably gets that all the time. Right, the the party, even just, like, the idea of going to the party, the, the wedding, was very clever. This thing of, you know, 
I'm going to give you a down payment. You keep this money, and if we fail, it, you, know, you, yeah, it, it, the the, um, you can keep it if we fail, and if we succeed, you'll get even more. Win win, you know that that was very clever, yeah, and you know, and he's he's right. The, this thing of, you know, if you committed a crime, we have to start all over, and also this thing of the. Ah, what's the word? Um, you know, it's not it's not that it's no questions asked, it's just this is one question that we have to ask in order to you know, it's it's no good if she gets the, the weaker ID and then gets caught. I uh, let's, right, right, I also want to say I, I really appreciate it. We see Adina, uh, Tyrone's mother. We briefly see you know her point of view or, or yeah yeah flat flashback point of view thing where you know basically she is I knew I said yeah Gloria Rubin that's right 1-800 missing holy crap that's from the past and fielding from from time cop I knew I said yeah anyway getting distracted yeah you know we see you know once Billy, Tyrone's brother, died, or was killed, was shot brutally. Then, the, the, yeah, since then, she's worried that Tyrone would also end up dead. And, let's see. Um, uh, let's see, what was the thing that... Yes, uh, so, yes, the, the wedding, um, <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, they ended up with food poisoning because they, what did they say, they binged sushi, like, I haven't had that much sushi, only when it's, like, on sale, but, holy crap, how do you not know that, yeah, you're not, you're not supposed to just gorge on that you you take your time with it but yeah i th i think it's liam who says tourist you know but but yeah um the the you know for a while it looks like tandy is just like passive aggressively tearing up the the you know one, yeah one of them was like love ah crap i don't actually remember the words but you know love is and just, yeah, and and it seems like oh you know she's she's thinking I'll never get this so I'm gonna but but then it turns out no she, that was to to replace the bills in the you know and very nicely done because we remember her doing it you know it's not like when when Delia pulls out the the ripped up you know we're not sitting there as an audience like where did that come from no we're like oh that's why you know so very very nicely done. And, uh, let's see, then there was the, right, uh, yeah, Liam returns with a, you know, intel, he, he did some recon, he got some information, and, yeah, you know, the fact that Tandy, because she was actually upset, you know, her running into the, the bathroom, that was, she was upset because of the, the flashback kind of thing. Which I did think, I I felt it worked better here than in the, the first episode. This thing of, you know, like I appreciate each, you know, bo uh, both times. If you had two so far. It's this thing of, you know, could she be happy? You know, she was happy kind of thing, you know. Providing a, a contrast and, and kind of making, you know, forcing her to, to examine her life. Which, you know, she usually does drugs to avoid thinking about her life. But yeah, the the you have this thing of the the um, yeah you know we get some details about how Tandy and, and Liam met, and and yeah this thing of you know he does legitimately he wants to protect her, you know he he's like, what was it you know what what's your what's your sign vertigo, and the let's see. But yeah, um, you know she manages to to get 
the the money off Delia, which is of course you know she played along, and then the the hug, you know, allowed her to, to yeah grab the the money. And let's see, right? And and the they drive off in the in the bride and groom car. It's, you know, just married. So that was yeah. Um, that might be about, uh, let's see, yeah, um, the ending of the episode, I was not 100% certain what Tyrone was, like, because he, it seemed like he fired his mother's gun at Connors and certainly Connors perceived it that way, but then there were no bullet, you know, no no wounds from that, and Tyrone disappeared. Um, I did think it was very compelling. You know, so far I find the show to be quite emotionally engaging. Tandy, you know, it looks like she is going to run. She's going to abandon Liam. But then, you know, she she reaches this point where the, the yeah, I don't know enough about cars. Was that a place that specifically does or does not allow for the kind of U-turn? Because she does end up crashing. But yeah, the, oh, right. Um, I definitely did think there, there was, in, in this episode, there was this one montage where we catch, you know, we see what a bunch of different characters are doing. And the music playing over it is this, you know, this song, that this kind of, like, hymn that always reminds me of that bit in Monty Python's Meaning of Life about how, you know, at least some hymns are just begging God not to brutally murder us in various, you know, sadistic ways. But, yeah, you know, this, this hymn about like love and and things getting better kind of thing and then we're seeing these you know things are not getting better kind of clips I thought that worked you know I I I mentioned in my video in the first episode I wasn't sure how I felt about the the music yeah the the many needle drops I felt like the the religious the hymn really really worked and let's see. I kept for for so much of the episode, uh, Detective O'Reilly didn't say anything, so I kept expecting, like straight up, that it would be revealed that she's maybe mute or something. But based, but then she arrests Tyrone. I'm pretty sure that's her arresting him. So, uh, uh, Liam, not Tyrone. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I swear I got enough sleep last night. But yeah, I mean. I was a little worried that they were going to do, like, a, oh, what a twist, you know, about someone's, like, someone being mute. That feels, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and the, yes, yeah, so I'm to be trivia for this episode. The man the dry cleaners wants his cummerbund repaired, however, refers to it as a cumberbatch. It's not clear if this is an intentional reference to actor... Benedict Cumberbatch who played Doctor Strange, or if if it is an actual goof, and yeah, I did think that was a fun little yeah, it it definitely felt like you know okay he's like he it's it's this young guy who is in this like upper class kind of thing, but he's not actually you know he doesn't fully understand it. He's he's maybe too young to to. Have have learned all this stuff, and yeah, I am gonna try to do an episode tomorrow. Let's see, and I think that is right. Um. The, the, you know, Father Delgado asks, let me throw a what if back at you. What if God heard you talking like this? What would he say? I th 
Christians, you've got to get your story straight. Is he omnipotent, as in he knows everything, or does he sometimes not pay attention?